Hello everyone. If you can hear me, please type in your chat that sound is good, video is good, and we can go on. So, according to my knowledge, uh, <laughs> there is something uh, something wrong with audio here. So sometimes microphone sound is getting lower. So please chat. Uh, well, add uh, notes in the chat if uh, sound is not enough. Okay. Deal. Okay. So, my name is Dmitry Orlov, and I'm working in Dr. Kortkov's lab for seven years. I worked with uh, Professor Kortkov in Institute of Physical uh, Culture, in uh, Scientific Research Institute in St. Petersburg, and uh, for some, uh, for several years. Uh, and uh, for one year, I'm. Uh, on position of general manager at BioWell company. Possibly most of you know what is BioWell. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to share with you, and it, this is regularly what I start any seminar on EPI GDV in any country, is to explain you the basics, the principles uh, on which all the rest of the BioWell and EPI HDV technology is based on. So, as you know, probably know the book by Stephen Covey, Seven Main Principles, Seven Main Habits. So, this, uh, this is the one thing that you need to learn first of all. So, that's why today uh, I will start from my personal perception and my explanation of connection between the our soul or whatever you call it in your religion and your um, uh, paradigm of the universe, uh, our psychological consciousness and uh, our physical body. So uh, this will be unusual presentation. Uh, and not because it's so uh, special, but because it is in Portuguese, not in English. <laughs> and the main uh, reason why it is in Portuguese is because it was prepared for um, yeah, quantum medicine uh, uh, expo and uh, conference in Sao Paulo, in Brazil. And uh, I really I had no uh, possibility to change it into English version because the subscription for the software has expired. But the main thing is that uh, you should watch only the uh, pictures. There are very, very few words there. So let's begin the story. Um, I will now start sharing the screen so you can see my screen and the presentation. Okay, so please tell me if you can see clearly my screen and if you can still hear me. As soon as I will have I can't see the screen. Okay. Um, okay, and now Olga, yes, Mavilde, yes, Carla. What is going on on your side? Can you see the screen now? Uh, it's okay that you don't see me. You don't need to see me really. You need to look at the presentation now. Yes, I have specially switched off the video so that uh, the internet connection 
uh, will be enough to show demonstrate the presentation. So the speed will be enough. You don't need to see my face now. You need to look at the uh, presentation. That's it. Okay, so everybody is ready. Let's begin from explanation. From my point of view, what is human health? How do we understand it? So, according to the World Health Organization, our health depends for 45 to 55 percent on the lifestyle. Well, for 17 to 20 percent, it depends on the environment in which we live. Uh, for 8, 10 percent, it depends on the national system of uh, health. And 10% it depends on genetics. So we all know that lifestyle is the thing that we can really change ourselves. Yes, I know that it is difficult because the habits that we have in this reincarnation, in this life, uh, were formed for many, many previous lives, and it's very difficult to change the habits. But this is the thing that is in your power and that you can control. Of course, you can also control the food and uh, liquids, the water that you drink, so your nutrition. So you can select the products that are better and not to eat junk food. Well, we cannot do anything with the national system of health, really. Um, so, the only thing that we can do is to move to another country. But if we stay in this country, we have to face the truth, a system as it is. Um, and the environment uh, in which we live and in which we work, this is the thing that we should also take care of. But this is a completely different lecture and I will speak about it uh, on the uh, webinar devoted to measurements with Sputnik and to interaction of human being and the environment uh, and scientific research being done in this sphere. So, but this is what we can also control and what we can really do and change. So, next thing is genetics. And probably you know that in the second half of the 20th century, uh, modern science was trying to explain almost everything that is happening in our life from the point of view of our genetics, from DNA level. So uh, it means that if I have so uh, loud voice, it's because of genetics. If I have uh, a very yellow face, it's because of genetics. If I have curly hair, it's because of genetics. If uh, I cannot control my emotions and I start shouting on everyone uh, from any moment that I don't feel comfortable, uh, that's genetics. I don't. I cannot do anything with it. So uh, the picture was like, we cannot control genetics. It's from our uh, parents, from our grandparents that we uh, really inherit and so we cannot do anything so we have to face the truth so it is as it is but there, uh, there is such a science called epigenetics that is uh, telling us a little bit different thing. So if we look into the DNA level so and what is going on on that level uh, Let's do it like this. Uh, our mind works in a way uh, as uh, it better perceives any information if uh, there is some kind of image. It's better to have 3D uh, image um, that is connected to this uh, idea or to some information. So let's imagine that our DNA is like a library big 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 library that has a lot of uh, rooms in it and in each room there are some kind of information stored in the books and schemes etc so main thing here is that 
not all of the rooms in this DNA library are open. Some of these rooms are closed. So it means if your RNA molecular comes to some room and knocks on the door and asks, please provide me some information about how to react on these and these circumstances. Because in any situation uh, that uh, we can be in our lives, our <laughs> different uh, senses collecting data, information from outer world, and then sent a request on how to react on this. So this is the uh, pr uh, procedure that is going on in our uh, DNA level, when RNA le uh, molecular comes to it and uh, us, uh, sends a request. Please provide information how to react in such and such circumstances. And depending on if the room is closed or it is open, you will get the correct answer or you won't get the correct answer. So what is this process? This process is called metallization and acetylization. So one is the process of closing the doors in DNA library, as a, a, another one is process of opening the doors in the DNA library. On the uh, physiological level, it's like activating some uh, consequences in our DNA or blocking uh, the expression of some uh, consequences in our uh, DNA. So next question is, on this DNA level, who controls the process of opening and closing the doors? Who is responsible for getting correct answers to any situations that in our life? So let's imagine another thing. So let's imagine that our DNA is like an orchestra. Philharmonic Orchestra, where we have all types of musical instruments and all of them are present there, all of them are sitting and waiting. A very simple question. On what or on whom the music that orchestra plays depends on? Of course, we all know that it depends on the conductor, the one that is standing here and controlling the process. So even you know that there uh, can be DNA twins, so the egg twins that have the same set of DNA uh, consequence uh, in uh, their bodies. But in their lives, at some point, they can have absolutely different health state, whilst the DNA stays uh, the same. So that there's something going on there and the main question here is who is this conductor that is controlling the music because the music let's imagine that the life that you are living is uh, equal to music that your DNA orchestra is playing so it can be very very uh, funny and joyful music or it can be very very sad music so the instruments are the same. The only difference is the conductor that is uh, controlling the play. So the main question, where is this conductor? So of course, I think that most of you will answer that this conductor is positioned somewhere here in our head. So it's like our consciousness, our mind, and it is connected to our brain. So this is how really uh, modern science and, uh, is looking at it. But there is one question here. What is the relationship between consciousness, our mind, and the emotions that we have? Because some scientists prove that uh, our consciousness and our mind is primary, and some of them are saying that emotions are controlling us. So what is primary, really? But as long as I have technical education and I'm a master in technical physics, I like to apply logics everywhere. And uh, 
if something is logical, then it should work in any system in this universe. So let's imagine that you have uh, some situation in your life and some you have some impact that is influencing on you. What kind of emotions will you have in this situation? Of course, if somebody is uh, saying to you that you are an idiot, you can have very bad emotions and you have uh, you will have bad mood for the rest of the day if especially it was very close relative who have said you that you are an idiot but let's imagine uh, that you are saying th uh, the same phrase to a very profound person some yogi and you will see that he has zero reaction to what you have said and zero emotions to what you have said even that the impact is the same, the emotions and the reaction can be absolutely different. So it means that there is something in between this. So there is some process of assessment. So you can assess the data that you are gathering from the senses and only after making some decision you will have some emotions and uh, some processes will be initiated on your physiological and biological level. So it means that your assessment depends on the your previous experience as some uh, researchers and scientists say. So if you have some previous experience in the same or almost the same situation that uh, your DNA, your database will give your uh, roadmap how to react on this uh, situation and then your biophysical level will react. So some pheromones, hormones and uh, other chemicals will be created in your blood your nervous activity will be adjusted according to the commands that your body will receive. So it means this is your responsibility how to react on any impact on any situation in your life. So it means that your consciousness and your mind are primary and your emotions are secondary. Of course, there is another thing here is that we're 99.9 percent .9 subconscious beings not conscious beings the amount of information that we process on subconscious level is many many times higher than the amount of information that we can process on the conscious level but it's up to you how to program the subconscious level because it is about your habits and it's up to you how to reprogram and it's up to you how to enlarge the amount of information that you can process uh, consciously. You can also enlarge your uh, possibilities of your consciousness also. So this is you who, who is really controlling this process. A little bit of quantum physics here. So just to understand the connection uh, that we will apply afterwards in explaining of EPI GDB technology. I, I like to explain quantum physics in very simple words, but anyway, so we have uh, some system. Uh, in quantum physics, any system is being uh, described from the point of view of probabilities. So, for example, if you are measuring something, you have probability, for example, if measurements uh, can give you only like uh, zero or one, so it's binary measurement. So there is probability one that uh, the system will give you answer zero and there is probability number two that measurement will give you answer one. From the point of view of quantum reality, the system that you are measuring is being described by the sum of these probabilities. Even if you are already made the measurement, in quantum reality it doesn't matter anything. So they were such a very, very talented and um, a very 
smart scientist Schrodinger that has uh, made such an experiment. It's called Schrodinger's cat. So let's imagine that we have a black black box where we put a cat and where we add one isotope of uranium, radioactive element. And uh, there is a sensor that can pick up, sense the irradiation of this uh, uh, uranium atom radioactivity when it dissipates. And we have a bottle with poison that is connected to this sensor. So it means when the uranium isotope will dissipate, the sensor will pick up this uh, irradiation and the poison will go off and the cat will be dead. So there are two possibilities. After you close the box with cat and uranium atom and everything there, and you don't know what is happening there. So you know that there are two probabilities. Probability one, that cat is still alive and uranium atom didn't yet dissipated and probability number two that uh, uranium atom has dissipated already and the cat is dead so there are two probabilities here but when you open the box you can see only one of the states you cannot see both like 50% cat is dead, 50% cat is alive, or 70% it is dead, 30 alive. So you can see one of these probabilities. So I will stop sharing for a moment and will draw you one map for a moment. So, so you all see the whiteboard where I'm painting now. So let's imagine that uh, when you're opening a box with a cat inside, you have like corridors, like parallel universes, parallel realities. And you have, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. And let's imagine that you are standing here and all these corridors are closed by the doors. So you don't know what is behind them. Everybody can see the screen. Yeah? So, when you're opening the door, you're entering some of the realities with two veterans. Either the cat is dead, so red color, it means dead cats. So, let's imagine that. Uh, there is a graph like this. So we have time and we have probability. So here it is like 100% and here we have 0%. It means that probability of that the cat is dead initially is zero and after some time it goes like this to 100. Probability of that the cat is alive is 100% when you just close the box and it's almost zero after the time of dissipation of the uranium atom. So it means, let's imagine that we have like uh, the atom uh, isotope should uh, dissipate within 10 minutes. So it means after 5 minutes, there should be 50-50 probability that 
cat is dead or that it is alive. So let's return to the corridors. So what it, does it mean? If we are making an experiment and repeating this experiment for 100 times, it means that after five minutes in five parallel realities, this cat is dead. And in five parallel realities, the cat is still alive. So main thing, when you're making a decision and when you're opening the box is to which corridor you will get in. Either you will get here and see that the cat is already died, is already dead within five minutes, or you will open the box and see that it is still alive. So if you repeat this experiment 100 times with the same, with 100 different cats and 100 isotopes uh, in like your neutral and keeping neutrality while doing this experiment you will have 50 50 probability in 50 cases you will see that the cat is dead in 50 cases you will see that it is still alive but the main thing here that when you enter the corridor you can see only this reality These borders are very thick and you cannot see the parallel realities. It means that for you, for your physical body, for your mind, you can see only one reality at a time. From all the um, different variants that are present in the quantum uh, reality. It is uh, the, uh, really the definition of our consciousness. Because consciousness is equal to being present in one of the quantum uh, in one of the realities in the quantum reality. This is to be conscious, to be present. So, is this moment clear to everyone? Yeah, just type yes, yes, okay. Or everybody is already asleep. Okay, so that's good that you are not asleep and you are more, more than that you are understanding me. So there is one uh, so-called life hack. Well, you know, people are very fond of hacking any system that they can do really a hack. So the life hack here in quantum reality, in our subjective reality, is that we can choose to which of the corridors we go. It is not some automatic uh, process. What does it mean? It means that, for example, if you like love cats so much that you really don't want to see dead cats, that even that in this exact moment, the probabilities are 50-50. It means that if you will be doing this experiment, then personally for you, if you don't like dead cats, probability in this experiment can become 60 to 40, or even 70 to 30, or if you're Yoda, it can be even 90 to 10. It is up to you how can you control the subjective reality where you live in. Maybe some of you have heard about the uh, transurfing or and this uh, approach to understanding our reality. But transurfing is correlating almost 100% with uh, quantum physics with what I'm explaining you and with the equations that uh, uh, Schrodinger has uh, showed. So what does it mean? That you can control 
more or less, it depends on the level of your consciousness and how developed you are at the present moment, to choose the subjective reality in, uh, to which you want to enter in subjective reality in which you want to live in. So, I think that this is enough with this explanation and I'm returning back to presentation. Last slide. Of course, with more evolved consciousness, you control your life more. It's like not uh, the subjective reality is not being like set to you by default, but you are more or less controlling uh, the reality in which you live in. So let's return to the box. Well, this is another principle uh, that I can explain you here is that anything, anything, absolutely everything works in this physical reality in our universe. Uh, it depends on uh, what religion you follow or not religion or science. Uh, that this physical and subtle level also behind the physical level universe is working with, uh, according to one main principle and this principle is resonance. What does it mean? It means that if there is some frequency that is being emitted on you, you can feel it only in one case. In the case if you have the same frequency inside yourself. What does it mean on quantum level, on quantum physics? It means that depending on what frequencies, on what things you emit, the quantum reality will resonate in uh, accordance to what you emit. So it means that you will end, live in the reality that fits your emissions. It fits absolutely 100% according to Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I like, you know, I'm scientists and uh, I'm using scientific perspective to anything that I'm studying. Is it uh, consciousness? Is it soul? If it's a uh, measurement of uh, uh, environment, anything. That's, that's my way. Okay. So, so uh, this is very also important part is the resonance part. But, well, this is really a big topic to discuss. And maybe if you have some questions, afterwards this lecture we can discuss this okay so next thing another image that you can uh, save in your mind in your database is that our life is like a maze a big big labyrinth where you can go anywhere and it's up to you where you go and you can enter this maze but the thing is that you don't see through the walls within this maze and your subjective reality is this labyrinth this maze that you're walking in but quantum reality is everything around it also and all the uh, labyrinth that you have near you and etc everything so what does it mean again where is the life hack here? I live like uh, hacks and I like, I'm not a programmer, but anyway, so we all know these life hacks. Let's imagine that we are walking inside of this uh, maze and at some point of time, we don't know where to go. So we have a lot of questions that we don't have answers to. 
So let's imagine that we can fly above this maze. We can fly above this labyrinth and take a look around while, while we are flying above it and see where we'll really need to go. And when we return back to the maze, to our physical body, suddenly we know where to go. Well, somebody tell, uh, calls this intuition. Uh, it's up to you how, what names to give this process. Uh, there are many names, I am sure. But the principle is that there is a way to connect to the overall information field or to quantum reality and get the data that you need in your life. How can we do that? We you all know this method. It is meditation, it is dreaming, sleeping, and altered states of consciousness. So these are the ways of our possibility to connect to the eternal knowledge, to the eternal database, to the place where all the information is present, and search for an answer. And then when you wake up in the morning, suddenly you don't know why, you know what to do. But you should know that it's not something really magical. It's simply your possibility of connecting to the general database, to the quantum reality. Another thing is that and another principle that I will explain here is that, of course, you cannot get all the information from uh, the quantum reality. Why? Let's return to the... chalkboard. So... For example, at some po moment in time, let's imagine that this is the amount of information that we know at the present moment. Of course, if we know some information, we will have certainly some questions. So this is the area of the questions that we have. So after some time, when we study, work on our self, we work on self-realization, etc. We search information, find the answers. This area also becomes our sphere of knowledge. And at that moment, we will have new questions. Let's imagine now that we are connecting to the quantum reality and uh, trying to get the answer here. Of course, we will get it and we can easily, or not so easily, but we can understand it and we can process this information. But let's imagine that we're trying to get information from here or somebody is like, some um, healer or some other extrasensory person is giving us information from this side, from this point, what does it mean at this moment of time? It means that you won't understand this information. It means that it is out of, you don't have even the question about it. It's a long way for you to go to reach this level. So you won't understand the answer if you don't have a question. So it means that when you connect to the quantum reality, you will get only the answers to the questions that you have. And you will get the answers according to the knowledge that you have. So it means even that everything, even this bit of information and this bit of bite of information are present in uh, the quantum reality, you cannot, you don't have access to it simply because you don't have enough knowledge of understanding this information. 
So it means that you will have to go many steps to reach this level. For some people and for some souls it takes several lives, for some souls it takes several years, etc. It depends on you, only on you. Okay, this is clear, I think. Let's return to the sharing. So, if you practice meditation, if you practice, for example, conscious dreaming, or you practice how to enter altered states of consciousness and control yourself in this in this position, then you can have a good connection with the ultimate database of information. So this is the connection, the interaction uh, between our mind, soul and physical body and emotions that I would like you to have and this is what all the rest of my uh, lecture about the EPIGDV technology will be based on. So it means that level of quantum reality is the level of our soul. Level of our mind is the level of our consciousness. Let's speak like this. Level of, uh, then it goes the level of our emotions and our physical body. So we have the possibility to connect to that ultimate world where everything is present. So it's up to you how to train yourself and how to reach that state. So about measurements. Well, it's up to you. You can call it collective unconsciousness, but it's really uh, about terms and words. Uh, I love very uh, much uh, uh, such a phrase that was told by Russian poet that word spoken is already a lie. It means that you can't really fit the quantum reality into words, but it's up to you how to uh, name some things there and you just need these names to interact with our other people around you that's it so if you want to call it collective unconscious it's okay let's call it collective unconscious uh, michael newton is calling it uh, soul's world but it's up to you so about measurement i would like you to uh, understand one thing that measurement is already choosing one of the realities you cannot really measure the quantum reality you can measure only the subjective reality so it means those subtle levels of subconscious unconscious etc collective unconscious or soul's world is the level that you cannot really measure because measurement is equal to choosing already one of the parallel universes, parallel realities. It is not, you cannot see the whole image, all the probabilities in all the realities. So when we will be speaking about measurement of person, measurement of people, you should understand that we are measuring not exactly the, like, uh, those subtle things, but we are measuring the reaction of our physical body on those processes that are going on even on that level that's what we can do we can measure the physical level and we can measure the impact of that you can call it unconscious the collective unconscious level on our consciousness level on our physical body that's what we can measure that's 
what we will do after a break, I think, because next topic is already connection of all these uh, principles to the EPA GDV technology. So at this moment, I would like to stop sharing. I will return to the video and do you have questions uh, uh, regarding these topics that I have covered now? If you have, you can ask now. I will try to answer them within 5-10 minutes and then we'll have a break for 5 minutes, technical break, and then we return back to the EPI GDV technology, okay? Waiting for questions or if you don't have questions, just write down none. That's it. So we can go to break right now. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. Four from eight. I have no questions. Okay, so then it's 53 minutes. So let's have a break for five to seven minutes and uh, return back at 18.00 and then we'll continue. Okay, I'm switching off the video and the audio right now.
Okay. I'm back. Everybody's ready. Okay. <clears throat> So, ready, good. So let's go. Switching off the video so you will look on the presentation. So, electronic imaging or gas discharge visualization. There are two names. Uh, meaning is the same, really, uh, but GDV was used initially, now we are more using EPI. So, EPI by well. So, the sense of uh, electrophotonic imaging is uh, that you analyze the light that's being formed by gas discharge uh, due to high voltage, high uh, that creates this gas discharge in air. So, there are devices that are being constructed starting from 1995 and there are more than 1500 uh, devices in the world to measure the fingers to measure different liquids materials like gdv pro camera uh, to measure 10 fingers at a time to measure the environment so to all the series of applications one moment about the certification of uh, these devices only one device from the line of uh, the epi gdv devices is being certified in russia and in belarus and in kazakhstan as a medical equipment this is the gdv pro camera this is the only one that was certified as medical equipment and there is a certificate of the Ministry of Health of Russian Federation that is saying that this is device of computer kirlianography for screening assessment of psychophysiological state and functional activity of a human being. So this is the exact, like we will say, a uh, political moment and this is the definition what our devices really make they give an assessment of psychophysiological and functional activity of a human body by the way there is one more thing that i wanted to ask you uh, regarding the principles that we were discussing in the first part of the lecture um, who of you have heard about mirror neurons that we have in our brain, in our head. Mirror neurons. Have you heard about them? Okay, two, three, no, two, yes. That's good. Okay, so I am sorry for Christine and Hillary if I will be uh, saying things that you already know and you already understand, but I will explain this moment to uh, everybody else. I will try to do this very quickly. So there are such neurons in our brain called Miro that are mirroring the uh, reality, the environment in which we live so if 
it is uh, a mechanism of uh, compassion, of uh, empathy, when you can feel the emotions of the person that is close to you, or not even close, that you are talking to. So you can perceive this state and your body will react in the same way as another person near you. If somebody is studying laughing near you, you are also studying laughing or you have an intention to start laughing automatically. If somebody is crying near you, automatically you will be also having emotions of studying willingness to start to cry. Another explanation is, uh, there was an experiment, I think, that you've heard about it, but just to uh, remind you, that uh, there was a group of people that were separated on, into two groups, equal groups, that were taken from the streets and they were throwing a ball to a uh, on as in basketball to the net and uh, in both groups the results were equal initially and then one group was uh, training for two hours each day for one week another group was watching NBA games for two hours each day for one week so the time they spend on so-called training on this activity is the same but at the end of the week they passed the test once again and what you think who showed the better, better results better results were showed by the group that was watching nba games not the one that was training this is the job of our mirror neurons that we have in our heads these neurons, when we are watching somebody doing something, they think that it is we who are doing this. So it means so for these mirror neurons, there is no me or you. There is no difference between you and the environment that you live in. It means for them, you and the environment in which you are the same absolutely the same so it means if you talk to a person that is constantly cursing after some time you will start cursing too because these mirror neurons will create these networks these connections in your mind afterwards in your brain and you will start doing the same as the people around you what is the conclusion from this, it's again about controlling your subjective reality. The conclusion here is that not only you are controlling, uh, not only you uh, are responsible for the state in which you are, the present moment, but also the environment and people that are surrounding you really influence on it. Even that you don't want to, they will because of these mirror neurons that are present in your brain. So just take care of the environment in which you live in and the people that you communicate to and the circumstances in which you are in, etc. So it's not only your habits and your traits that you have, but also the traits, habits, Pro, uh, characteristics of the surroundings in which you live in. This all creates your state in which you are now. This is your psychophysiological state and functional activity that you have that can be measured by the PIGD devices. Okay, that's clear, I think, yeah? So let's return back to political things. So, BioWell and all other EPI GDV devices are not registered as medical equipment anywhere. They are 
registered if it's needed as a psychological equi equipment for psychological tests for stress analysis why if we register this equipment as medical equipment then you will have as a private practitioner or the user of this equipment you will have to uh, comply with a lot of a lot of regulations and rules like you will have to have special room for this equipment special specialist for such equipment and you will have to pay some special fees and taxes for, for supplying medical services etc etc so it becomes too complicated after all so or oh, by well, and it is written on the box in manual, etc. Everywhere, it is written that it is not a diagnostic tool. If you have for health-related issues, please consult your doctor. This is a standard phrase, just to explain anybody that you won't have a diagnosis after using the by well. Diagnosis is the thing that can be set by a specialist or by a medical doctor that is using the device. It's like thermometering your temperature of your body. You can measure and see that it is 37. But what does it mean? It's absolutely different thing. Maybe for you it's normal. For well, my grand grandfather, 37.4 was normal temperature for all his life. So it doesn't mean that he was ill. So for other person, it is already illness and process of inflammation going on in his body. So measurement is one thing, making a diagnosis another thing. So these devices are intended for express assessment of the psychophysiological state and functional activity. This is clear, I hope. So these devices are registered, have those technical certificates in Europe, in different countries, that it is safe to use these devices. There are books uh, that are written on EPHDV and uh, if you're interested in applying this technology in your practice, in your life, if you are eager to really control your state in a time, see what is happening to you, or you are doing some practices and you want to find out what practices uh, fits you better. So you can go to our website and download books from there. The two main books that I recommend you to read about um, EPI technology. These two, two books can be easily downloaded from the website. See, resources, papers, you can also buy uh, from Amazon.com the printed version, but these two books in the bottom of the list, Electron Photonic Analysis with Cover and GDV in Medicine, are two main books that you need to read in order to understand what these devices are measuring. Uh, these are one in medicine and this blue book number two. So you can buy them in previous version, you can um, download the English version for free from our website. So there are very many interesting things there that you can find out about this technology. Another thing is if we talk about different technologies, because there are hundreds, really hundreds of different devices and different methods on the market that are capable or being said that they are capable of uh, doing uh, this assessment of uh, measuring the functional state of the person or psychophysiological state, etc, etc. Uh, 
During my practice and my work in Dr. Kortkov's laboratory, I have derived one principle. That is, number one, is this technology certified? And if it's proved by some authority that it is doing exactly like this or that, well, if I showed you the certificate of Ministry of Health where it is clearly stated what these devices are made for. Another thing, well, in many cases, pro uh, production companies of the devices are simply showing you a certificate of conformity that is saying that it's simply not dangerous to use this device for a human being, and that's it, nothing else. But you need uh, to find out the certificate that will explain you what really this technology does, what information it will give you. In many cases, such methods, uh, uh, competitive methods, doesn't have such document. Another thing, okay, if there is no such document, there can be uh, different problems in different governments in different countries. Another thing is having the scientific papers and articles published in peer review journals about this method, but not only by the inventor of this method, but by other people that are independently using this method uh, in their own practice and saying that this is efficient to use this technology. So you should search for papers. In the case of EPHGTV, there are hundreds of papers published and many of them are published in peer reviewed journals that are devoted to medicine, psychology, sport and technology. So you can uh, see those articles in the book Application of GDV in Medicine. And uh, this what forms the basis that all this technology is based on. The ground floor of all the rest of what is being done with these uh, devices. So we have uh, international congresses going on in our city in St. Petersburg in first weekend of July. Uh, if you are interested in visiting St. Petersburg in the period of white nights, because lost audio, one second. One, two, three. Well, my audio is working. Everybody can hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay, fine. Let's go. Okay. So if you're interested in visiting St. Petersburg in the uh, time of white nights, when the sun goes down at 1 a.m. and goes up at 3 a.m. and you can go sightseeing, walking around the city and it's very beautiful all day long, really all day long, it's not getting dark even at 2 a.m. at night. So you're welcome, register, come to us and uh, you will hear interesting things about science information spirit, about how people apply EPI HDV technology in their own practice, in their alternative integrative medicine, in some therapies, in uh, sports, in medicine, in psychology, etc., in their healing practices, etc. So, too loud. <laughs> okay. This. Okay. So, you're welcome to come to our congress and uh, meet with Dr. Kurtkov, with me, 
and take uh, partic uh, even participate in the congress if you have some interesting material to tell okay one second i will give the url so if you have some uh, interesting information to share about application of EPA GDV in your own practice and you have some database collected, you have some interesting results, you're mostly welcome. Just contact us, go to the website. The e email is already uh, mentioned there or just write to our general email. And you're welcome. Uh, we will give you the brief info how to get here. Okay. Next thing. Uh, there are many organizations worldwide that are using EPHDB in their practice. There are medical organizations, there are scientific research organizations, and there are private uh, centers uh, where it is used. Well, I think most of you know this person. And most of you know this person. So it's been a long while while uh, the EPA GDV is on the market from 1995. It's almost 20 years here. So there are a lot of studies already done and a lot to be done to develop it. So main spheres of application is medicine, psychology, integrative therapies and sports. Also research uh, um, studies in uh, the fields of studies of materials and liquids and studies of the uh, uh, environment. We will have the uh, discussion about these uh, topics afterwards on the next webinars how this technology is being applied in medicine, psychology, in sports, in integrative therapies, etc. I will demonstrate the uh, software, what information you can get there, etc. Also, we are planning to have a webinar about the studies of materials and uh, environment. I will tell you about the Sputnik, about how it was made, and what is the main application of it? What are the main uh, advantages of the PHGTV method? Because there are many different methods and different possibilities how you can collect the information about the uh, functional state of a person. So, to my mind, there are several main advantages. And to my mind, to my person, uh, personal perspective, uh, that's the main one is that is visual. That it doesn't give you some, uh, you know, not only numerical information that's, well, okay, this is good, but what does these numbers mean? Or what uh, really conclusions you can make from it? Uh, this is visual, and at the same time, it is very easy to understand what is uh, being shown on the images. Well, according to my own practice, I have measured more than 1,000 people and have more than 1,000 clients. And within five minutes after I explain them what's, how, uh, what's the main principles and how to really analyze the image, Within five minutes, they're starting to sh uh, show me what is this and what is that and pay attention to this, pay attention to that. So they understand this very fast. So it means that it is obvious and this is easy to understand this uh, technology. Also, another thing that it is very fast. This is one of the main advantages is that to measure person is it takes maximum two minutes to measure with and without filter it takes like two, uh, up to five minutes but really two minutes and you've got a lot of information about person's functional state about level of stress etc functional activity of different organs and systems other advantages are that this is not invasive and secure it means 
you don't need to really undress yourself or do any blood tests, etc. That will take a lot of time afterwards. So it's non-invasive. You just put your fingertips. That's it. This is reproducible. It means that you can apply a mathematical statistical analysis to the results that you will have. You know that any sign starts from number four. Because if something happens once, it doesn't mean anything. If something happens twice, there's something to look at. If something happens three times, then it's coincidence. If something happens four times, then this is something to study. Because there is scientific explanation of it, because there is no mathematical, parametric or non-parametric met statistical method that can compare two groups with less than four values in it. Until you have four experiments or four numbers in each group, you can make experiment. So four, five, six, seven, then the sign starts. If something can be reproduced and repeated only two or three times, and then it's not working the same way, it's non-scientific. So these devices are working reproducible, and the result is predictable. Uh, of course, the level of uh, accuracy of different devices in EPI GDV world are different. For example, GDV Pro Camera <coughs> will give you around 1 or 2%. <coughs> 1 or 2% um, deviation itself. Whilst BioWell will give you from 3 to 5% deviation. Another thing, in parallel with visuality, it, have, uh, it has a lot of numerical digitalized data that you can compare before and after, not only by looking and your visual assessment, by comparing the numbers. So about electrophotonic imaging, the real image and what is happening in the reality is this. Gas discharge is of light blue and violet color. No other colors are there in the regular air when you have it. Of high intensity, it can be closer to white. Devices, I'm capturing it, the video camera that is inside, in this way. So you have a grayscale image. What does it mean? That if you see some other colors, like red, green, or some other, it means that this is Photoshop. This is not gas discharge. Uh, you won't see such pink colors uh, if you make the measurement of the fingers on the electrode. So this is just, this is also Photoshop, these colors here. This is a processing of the grayscale image and transforming it to a colored image. So there are 10 different colors here. Just to show you that it will look like this. This is the real image that you get on the device. All the rest, this is all uh, negative image, the same one, but in negative form. Then intensive palette, this is already uh, some kind of uh, Photoshop applied. This one is another just uh, Divide, uh, dividing into different colors according to other equations and other principles. But this is all Photoshop. The real image is like this. All the rest is just coloring, and it's up to you how you, can, you want to color it. 
So, what do we really measure when we put the finger on the electrode of the device? There is glass electrode, quartz electrode here, transparent. And there is conductive layer on the bottom of this glass. And electromagnetic impulse generated inside the device that creates a high voltage, high uh, frequency electromagnetic impulse and applies it to this transparent electrode. Due to the difference of potentials between your finger or any other object that is positioned on the electrode and this layer, you will have electrophotonic emission from your fingertip or from metal cylinder or from any other object. That is those electrons and photons are striking the gas molecules, air, air molecules, and excite them like this. So they come to the excited states, and when they relax to the ground state, they emit photon light. This is exactly the lights that we are photographing by a CCD matrix, by a standard video camera that is inbuilt into the device. So we're photographing not exactly the in, uh, emission from your fingertip, but we are photographing the air discharge that uh, happened due to electrophotonic emission from your fingertip. This image then is sent through video converted to your computer. So, do you have questions about this part? So uh, then I will come to the connection point between the what I have explained and the first part of the lecture. No questions till then. Uh, I will explain about filter afterwards. It's later in the presentation. I'm asking about what I have explained. Is it clear or not? Okay. So, here is the conclusion. To understand how electrophotonic imaging and gas discharge visualization technology works, you should remember such a chain of conclusions. So, remembering the first part of the lecture, depending on the state of consciousness that we have, the mindset that we have, we will analyze the situation in which we are now and will have some specific emotional state. So depending on our mental consciousness state, we will have different emotional states through the process of DNA expression, etc. that we also discussed in the beginning. So this emotional state is equal to having some specific parameters of your body at the physical and chemical level. So it means that your body will have different electrical activity, different conductivity, resistivity impedance, and different chemicals will be formed in your blood, etc., etc., la, la, la. Depending on these parameters, you will have different number of free electrons in your body and especially in your fingertips. Depending on these parameters, on these physical and chemical parameters and number of free electrons, when the high voltage impulse applied, the, num the electrophotonic emission that you will have will be different. So it depends on your physical and chemical state and number of free electrons that you have. Depending on electrophotonic emission, you will have different process of uh, excitation of gas of air molecules and of course you will have different gas discharge 
and then you can have different parameters of this gas discharge, electrophotonic emission. That can be calculated and assessed by the program. So main parameters that you can see is area, so number of pixels of the image itself. Number two is intensity, so it is the intensity of these pi you know, pixels, of this light. And number three is the structure of this light. So number one and two are easily uh, calculated and assessed uh, numerically. Number three, the structure is difficult to really uh, assess numerically. This is a very difficult thing, really. And this is what we are studying in, on the seminars. And that's what I will try to explain you on the uh, further webinars. So everybody understood this chain of uh, mental consciousness level, then emotional level, then physical and chemical level, number of free electrons, then electrophotonic emission, then gas discharge, and then parameters of this gas discharge. So it means that the parameters that we see and the images that we see depend on all of the above mentioned levels. It means that what we measure with EPI depends on mental state, on the emotional state, on the physiological state, on the number of free electrons in your body, and depends on the air state, etc., etc. Okay? The, uh, the parameters that you see and the images that you get with the EPI-HDV depend on all these things. Full stop. Okay. Next step is when you get the images, how to understand how these images are connected to some organ or system. Uh, for this, there is a sector diagram by Dr. Korotkov. First, such a diagram. This is connection uh, of Kirlan effect with the traditional Chinese medicine. Because according to TCM, we have um, acupuncture points on our fingertips. Each acupuncture point is connected to some specific organ or system. And first uh, one who decided to connect these things was Peter Mandel from Germany, who decided to apply traditional Chinese uh, medicine and this acupuncture concept, uh, acupuncture point concept to Kirlan photography of the fingers and uh, the main problem was about automatization of this process and making it reproducible and repeatable so that's where comes Dr. Kortkov mission in 1995 when they created the first device they also created a software that was capable of processing the image and was capable of calculating some specific parameters. So on one hand, we have a device, hardware, that made it possible to make this gas discharge, this electrophotonic image in process, a repeatable one and reproducible one. And then there are there is a software that made it possible to calculate some specific parameters of this electrophotonic emission. That what moved, shifted the kilanography and kilan effect to the stage of the uh, scientific method. So there are different um, publications about it and that you can read in the books that I told you. Uh, Another thing that I, I will show you one example, just how this was made initially. So, for example, Professor Tuvano in such university once has taken a group from more than 500 patients 
and uh, divide it into two groups. Uh, first group first pass the EPI test and then pass the uh, standard clinical analysis and uh, correlation between the results were calculated. Second group first pass the clinical analysis according to symptoms that they had and afterwards they passed EPI test, EPI analysis and again correlation was calculated. There were people with problems in cardiovascular system, with bronchial uh, system, with uh, um, digestive system, with uh, skeletal muscular system, etc. So also they passed uh, in clinical analysis the blood test, urine test, etc. So what were the results that Dr. Tumana, Professor Tumana, published? Uh, Columns number one, two, and three is the correlation of the EPI test in, uh, with the clinical tests in the first group. So it means that if you measure a person on EPI device and then pass the clinical test in 86, 82, 89, something around 80% probability that results will coincide. Number four is power of prediction of the EPI analysis. So it means if you measure a person on EPI and you will see some malfunctions and clinical analysis won't show you anything, after some time the person will have this problem that can be, would be measurable with clinical analysis. So it means that it ha API has a predictive power, so it shows the problems that are not yet developed. So you can, uh, so the problems that you cannot prove by clinical data at the moment. So really, if you are not sure, you can wait and see that after some time, after uh, some period of time, a person will have the problem that you have seen on API long before that. I had such cases in my practice when I measured person and said, well, you have to take care of your kidneys. Um, I would uh, rather visit a doctor uh, and uh, pass the ultrasound measurement or some kind of test on your kidneys to see what is happening there. Well, person said, no, well, I feel good and I didn't have any problems with kidneys, really never. So. I said, okay, it's up to you, but I am saying that there is something not good there. Like, it looks like it's better to take care of that. And within two weeks, person after two weeks is calling me on the cell phone and saying, hey, hello, Dmitry, how are you? Saying, yeah, I'm fine, and you? Yeah, I'm fine, I'm in a hospital. Say, what happened? Well, I have stones in my kidneys. So, just saying, I'm just calling you to say that you were right when you were saying me about my kidneys. Okay, that's good, but why didn't you take care before getting to hospital? So, but the thing is that it works like this. Another thing is that you need to learn how to properly analyze the images. So number five, the lowest percentage of the correlation is uh, for the second group. It means when people with some symptoms come to for clinical tests and afterwards uh, come to EPI analysis, in some cases clinical data shows that, for example, everything is good, but EPI shows that it's not good. In other cases, Clinical analysis show that the problem is in one place, whilst EPI analysis show that the problem is there, but can be also uh, in uh, another place. So it decreases the correlation. But anyway, 79% is a good percentage. So again, Professor Tomano concluded that this is very useful method for such tests. So about measurement, measurements with filter and without filter. Well, 
clinical doctors like to, uh, in the Western medicine especially, like to divide our body into organs and systems. System is better, but organs and are studying each organ separately from the rest of organism, which is absolutely nonsense. But nevertheless, they are doing it. And another thing that they are doing is that they are dividing, for example, our body into different systems. Well, for example, they are dividing our nervous uh, system yeah, into two parts, sympathetic and parasympathetic. One of them, sympathetic, is uh, connected with accumulation of energy and general regulation. So it is more connected to physiological state. And now the one is parasympathetic is uh, connected to consumption of energy and secretion functions. So it's more correlated to psycho-emotional state. But of course, uh, we should understand that there is like, it's not black and white picture. In any black, there is piece of white. In any white, there is piece of black, like yin and yang. So it means that when we are measuring with filter and without filter, we're usually saying that without filter, we measure psycho-emotional state, and with filter, we measure physiological state. But according to the uh, chain that uh, of conclusions that I have uh, explained to you uh, beforehand is, is that when person is in very calm psycho-emotional state then you will see more physiological part but if a person is in very stressed states then you will see more psycho-emotional part and you won't see the physiological part yeah that's true Karen so true so that's why we usually do two types of measurements with filter and without filter because psycho-emotional level is connected to the secretion so all the fat sweat and other things that we have on our fingertips you can notice that if uh, you are stressed you, all, all the uh, of this is present on your fingertips they become sweaty hot cold etc that means that this psycho-emotional state is less stable than the physiological one. It means that we can have 10% deviation in time. Of course, it depends on the psychotype that we have, if we are choleric, phlegmatic, or sanguinic, etc. Uh, if we look at the physiological level, it's much more stable. It fits into 5% deviation in time in normal states if the person is not ill. And uh, even if you are taking uh, care of your health, in case you are taking care of your health and watching after yours, then your state, physiological state with filter can be the same for even weeks or even for months or even for years whilst psycho-emotional level without field time measurements can be absolutely different so all the rest i will explain you in other presentations about measurements of uh, environments what kind of information we can get there how to make interpretation of these data how to measure liquids and get data there, what kind of images you can get and how to make interpretation of them. So, thank you very much for your attention. We have 10 minutes for questions and answers if you have, and that's it. I'm stopping sharing and returning back to the video. Okay, last look. Did you try different materials as a filter? Does it affect the result? Yes, of course, uh, filters uh, are... This is not really a filter. It is more like a film. It doesn't filter really anything. But uh, the quality of the surface of this plastic film 
uh, allows the electroplatonic uh, emission, the avalanche, to spread faster. So you can see the deeper levels of the um, state in your fingers, in your body. That's why we're using these films. Uh, but it, the, it is being used for many years. Really, uh, you can apply of the same quality, this plastic film, with the same surface uh, functions, and you will get almost the same results. OK, any other questions? Oh, okay, yeah, of course. Uh, if people will afterwards uh, repeat this, see the replay and absorb the information, okay, but uh, just right now, as I'm here, just use the time when I'm here, just ask the questions that you have according to the topic of the webinar that we have today. Okay, you're welcome. Absolutely welcome. I hope you like the webinar and the information that I have conveyed was easy to understand. And well, I will treat this as a compliment. Is as if if you don't have questions, it means that you understand everything that I've said. Okay, as always, we have almost 100% women here. As always, women, uh, women are more open to new knowledge than men. It's okay. Men will see the replay, yeah, after women will say them about that. <laughs> But this is normal, as uh, you know, the ancient Vedas, the uh, Vedic in Vedic culture, it is said that women are much more flexible and they're uh, adjusted to new things much faster. That's why on such seminars, they, yeah, Laszlo, you might be the only one, <laughs> unusual one. Yeah. Okay, so if you don't have any questions, uh, then have you ever experimented with individuals that have DBS in plant? Uh, DBS in plants, you mean pacemaker? Heart in plants, the pacemaker? Or what is DBS in plants? Ah, in the brain? No, I have never experimented with such people. I have made, exp uh, well, measurements and I've told people who have some, like, uh, brain injuries or even have some plates covering the part of their skull because it was broken. But uh, I cannot say that I've seen something very uh, unusual in their cases. Uh, the thing is that uh, EPI technology is picking up the functional state. It means that if everything is uh, functioning well, even that, for example, if you don't have one kidney, but another kidney is working well and uh, fulfilling the function of both kidneys, then on uh, EPI test analysis, you will see that both kidneys are working well, even that one of them is extracted. Okay, so any other questions? If the electric plate is scratched, would it affect the image significantly? 
Uh, no. Uh, if you mean the scratches on the electrode of the uh, device, no. Well, I can show you my device. Mm -hmm. One second. This is an old uh, GTV device. And I don't know if you can see on some angle that it is scratched in the center a lot. Uh, well, possibly you see in the reflection. But you see that these scratches are not really influencing on the gas discharge at all uh, because uh, gas discharge is superficial and uh, uh, so it doesn't affect. Just don't make too many scratches really because afterwards you can simply break the electrode. That's a bad thing then. Uh, but if it's simply small scratches, that's nothing. Uh, if, yeah, well, if this is an electric equipment, really in the instructions that we have for uh, BioWell and for EPA uh, other instruments, we are not recommending to make uh, measurements uh, for people with pacemakers because you never know how the pacemaker will react on the high voltage, high intensity, uh, high frequency electromagnetic impulse. You never know. So we don't recommend to do like this. Uh, yeah, by well, by well, uh, we are starting production of filters. We have already produced some, but uh, yes, soon they will be available for order on the websites, and you can order them for yourself. Um, we should calibrate the device. Well, I will be uh, explaining these things in the next webinar when we will be uh, discussing how to operate, how to work with the BioWell and all other uh, devices. And, uh, but really, calibration should be made uh, according to the manuals. Whenever the environmental condition, so if the uh, temp air temperature in changes with uh, more than like five degrees or the relative humidity of the air changes or the number of free electrons if you open the door and ventilate the uh, uh, room where you make measurements it's better to recalibrate the device um, yeah I don't recommend measurements for people with pacemakers really uh, well uh, I thought that you have the documents, but uh, I can I can share with you. I think that I will provide the uh, for the documents for the instructions, yeah, uh, for the standard manuals that I have developed to Olga, and she will uh, add it to the email. And when you replay in, in this email, those um, links to those manuals will be uh, presented. Uh, I'm just uh, having them on my Google Drive disk, so you will have them afterwards. Okay. Yeah, when a person has cold hands, it means that the <laughs> there is almost no. Uh, the blood vessels are very uh, narrow and there is almost no energy there. Oh yeah, it can be posted on the membership area. Yeah, but in many cases, cold hands, uh, yeah, you can measure even them. But, well, according to my practice, I measured a lot of people that have constantly cold hands and there was no problem with them because the fingers never get warm. <laughs> uh, so, but it's, uh, anyway, it's uh, no problem with that.
chest, you see that his energy flows are not good in his body. Cold hands are not, uh, if, if it's not minus 20 on the street, of course, I'm saying uh, if uh, fingers are cold even in warm environment. Yeah, poor circulation. Okay. Um, thank you all for your time, for your patience, uh, for being here with us. Thank you, Olga, for organizing this. Well, see you then on Friday on the webinar, or if you have, will have no possibility to join, you can see the replay afterwards. Thank you.